We are so thrilled to be partnering with Hinge. Hinge is the dating app designed to be deleted. As you all know, I'm a huge Hinge advocate as I met my partner of almost three years on the app. Even before meeting him, Hinge was always my go-to app because I met more relationship-minded people here and had some great dates. Clearly, I haven't been on the app for a little while, but I re-downloaded it to check out some of the new features. One that stood out to me was the voice prompt, my best friend's take on why you should date me, where your friend can hype you up. Not only does this make the profile creation less daunting, but it's not always easy to see your own green flags. So to test it out, I asked UA some fun prompts to get her take on what I could put if I was dating again. So the first one, how long have we known each other? What was your first impression of me and how has that changed? Julie and I have known each other for almost 10 years. My first impression of Julie was that she's very social, but I've learned that she has a lot more depth to her beyond the social butterfly that she is. My next prompt, what do you think are my green flags? I would say she's deeply loyal. She believes in love, curious mindset, and she is fearlessly ambitious. And then last but not least, what kind of friend am I? Julie is the kind of friend who will always have your back, no matter what. Damn, that feels nice to hear. So download Hinge and try voice prompts today. Then find some one worth deleting the app for. If you've been listening to the pod, you know I'm marking my calendar for the big sale from Last Bottle Wines, one of our wonderful sponsors. If you don't already know, they're a Napa-based online wine shop that offers 30 to 70% off retail. And the best part, there's no subscriptions, no fees, and no minimum purchase, just a daily email with really great wine. And as I mentioned, they're having a massive sale. Their marathon sale is coming up on March 28th and 29th. They flip that one wine per day rule on its head and instead offer back-to-back, two-back deals. That means wines are only up on the site for a couple minutes at a time. We got a preview order with the mini marathon package of some of their favorites, and I'm telling you, it's a sale you want to get in on. And the best part is we're offering Datable listeners 10% off your first order with code Datable. Sign up at lastbottlewines.com and use the code Datable and find out why Last Bottle is the most fun way to discover and buy amazing wine. Hi, I'm Yui Shu. And I'm Julie Kraftchik. We're active daters turned dating sociologists. Here to dive into everything modern dating and relationships. Welcome to the Datable Podcast. Another brunch talk. Let's go. We know you're ready. You've got your eggs, frittatas, pancakes, your coffee. Hungry for that dating advice. (laughs) Hey, side note, I did go to brunch with one of our community members, Tony, the other day. And that man can fucking eat. (laughs) <laughs> two entrees. That's attractive. Two drinks. I was like, really? Is this, are we sharing? He's like, no, this is all for me. <laughs> Love it. Damn. But he also came back from like a six mile run. So that's totally different than me. So we will go into this week's brunch talk question. Again, via brunch talk, we answer your burning dating questions. And this question is, when is the right time to reveal past relationship status? In particular, the very stigmatized being divorced. Yes. And for more context, for first dates, when past relationships aren't yet discussed, it seems less important. But after how many dates is it obligatory mention if the other person does not explicitly ask about past relationships? For example, being loved, married, etc. So when do you talk about it? I just feel like if it's a big part of your past, like being divorced, it's pretty important to just say it up front. If you don't want to say because you want to scare away someone that that person's not the right person if they're scared about your past relationship status. But there's also like this line to be drawn where if you have been in several relationships that didn't go anywhere, I don't think that's necessary no. to talk about up front. That's just like everybody's past, right? Yeah, I'm really mixed on this one. I think the children does change it. So I recognize that the person that wrote in did address that, that this is a situation where you're divorced without children. I think the reason why I think that is because that plays into your current life, where if you don't have children and you're just divorced, you're probably not seeing this person anymore. It's actually not that different from an ex, in my opinion. That being said, I agree with you. You don't want to make it more of a thing by hiding it. 
I don't think you need to talk about relationships while you're getting to know someone new. It can be a very light gloss over. And if someone asks more questions, then of course, don't avoid them. But you don't need to dive into all the nitty gritty. I feel like when I talked about old relationships, it's because I wasn't actually over the people. That's why I brought it up. Mm. So I think if you're actually in a headspace where it's not that big of deal to you, that's probably a good sign that you're ready to date and meet someone new. So I don't think it's a red flag if someone's not talking about relationships. So do you think that if someone's divorced without kids, they don't need to talk about it unless relationships are a topic in the conversation? I think it's like everything else, at least how I view it. I feel like we, for some reason, carry more weight to divorce than anything else. Mm -hmm. I'll even equate it to this podcast, okay? When I was dating for a long time, I didn't bring up this podcast. And then it got really awkward when I'm like five dates in and I haven't shared a big part of my life. Yeah. So I would view it like that. (laughs) Like if there's a way it comes up and you're hiding it, to me, that's not great. For you, for the budding relationship and for the other person at the other side. I don't think you necessarily need to be like on date one or even date two or even day three, hey, I've been divorced. That feels like unnatural. And especially if you're not sure if you even like that person, Mm. I don't think you owe them that information, nor is it a factor in your relationship. I would go off of what feels natural and organic. And if it comes up in a way that you're hiding it, then think about that and how you could rectify that piece. I see it a tad differently. Okay. Because I think it's not even the divorce thing. Personally, for me, I think it's important to know when was your last relationship. And if I find out on a first date that someone was going through a divorce still, yeah, that gives me a lot of information and gives me an opportunity to make a choice. If I find out someone ended a relationship two years ago, and it was a divorce, like that doesn't affect my decisions as much. Mm -hmm. But maybe it's not so much like relationship status, but more like when did your last relationship end? I agree with you on that. I think it's more about what headspace are you in right now? Are you ready to date? Yeah. And yeah, it could be past relationship. It could be some other reason. Maybe you have like a parent that you're attending to or some work thing that just makes you not have the time to date. I think it's all falls into that bucket of I'm not actually a data viable prospect right now. Right. And hopefully you'll have self-awareness to take yourself out of that dating scene if that is you and you're in the thick of something, but not everyone does. So I do think as daters, we do need to ask those questions. So there's nothing wrong with asking the question about like, when was your last relationship? You don't have to sit there and talk about your relationship for hours, but that's important information that you should get to like understand and know if this person is in a place to date. And then I would say as the person that was divorced, it feels inauthentic to me to not share it if someone's explicitly asking. Yeah, I think when the topic is brought up, don't try to hide it. Yeah. But why is it that we place so much weight on someone who's divorced versus someone who was like in a relationship, let's say for 10 years? 100%. Thinking about my ex, right? When we first got together, before we got together, everyone called him the divorce guy. They're like, oh, you should get together with a divorce guy. He was only married for a year. But if he had been (laughs) with someone for 10 years and gotten out of that relationship, no one would be like, oh, you should get with the guy that just got out of a 10-year relationship. That's not his identity. That's why there's so much stigma. I agree with you. That's why I was kind of like taking the stance of if it's not in the way, then why is it treated so differently? Mm -hmm. But I agree with you. Society puts it out there that there is something bigger about divorce than just breaking up. And to me, again, it goes back to have you process this. Are you in the place to let someone new into your life? Mm. And, you know, there could be someone that dated someone for three months that's hung up on their ex versus someone that's dated someone for 10 years but has fully processed it. I think we have to stop attaching so much weight to labels and years and look more. How is this person currently working through this and showing up today? So maybe on a first date, a good question is what you just posed, which is like, what What's your headspace around dating right now? And that should naturally bring up if you're divorced or like whatever status you feel comfortable bringing up. There is no timeline that we should bring up any of this information until you feel comfortable with bringing it up. But I think the general rule is don't try to hide something if it feels like it should be naturally brought up. That's probably the worst thing you can do is try to hide something. 
Let's take a quick break to hear from our sponsor. This episode is sponsored by Via. We all know there are things that can help set the mood in the bedroom, but did you know a little THC could also do that? Yes, Via has developed a unique blend of pleasure-enhancing cannabinoids, libido-strengthening herbs, and a low dose of THC all into one mind-blowing gummy called High Love. This gummy, wow, it will awaken your senses, increase blood flow, and intensify any sexual experience. I've been pleasantly surprised by the High Love gummies because it is just the right amount of THC THC for me to have a good time without feeling sleepy. And hey, if THC is not your thing, Via also offers a wide array of other gummies without it. And everything legally ships in 50 states with discreet packaging directly to your door. So if you're over 21, you can get 15% off and a free pack of award-winning Dreams THC plus CBN sleep gummies with our exclusive code DATEABLE at ViaHemp.com. That's V-I-I-A-H-E-M-P.com. Let the gummies work their magic. Head to to viahemp.com and use a code DATEABLE to receive 15% off and one free sample of their sleepy dream gummies. That's viahemp.com and use a code D-A-T-E-A-B-L-E at checkout. Take your passion and pleasure to a whole new level with high love from Via Hemp. As you know, I recently left my corporate job and I've been in total recovery mode all about self-care. One of my new routines is the nighttime shower before bed. There's just something about washing away the day and that reflection that's been super helpful for me. I've been using one of our partners, Osea's Mega Moisture Duo. This combo body oil and body lotion are so freaking incredible. It literally feels like I'm at a spa. I realize that the secret is seaweed and other skin level ingredients that are normally reserved for face products. And that's why I was so excited when Osea became one of our partners. And, you know, we're so grateful for partners like this because one, they keep the show going, but they're also super for good for all of our listeners and for our own well-being. So if you want to have that nighttime bliss like I am doing, you can get 10% off your first order site-wide with code DATEABLE at OseaMalibu.com. You'll get free samples with every order and free shipping on orders over $60. So head to OseaMalibu.com and use the code DATEABLE for 10% off. Let us know which products you end up going with, share them in social, Super excited to see what you end up choosing. I think I told you this a long time ago as I went on this date with this guy and we matched on Hinge. Mm -hmm. He told me he saw me on Bumble and I realized I swiped past him on Bumble because on Bumble he shared that he had children and was divorced. Mm. And on Hinge, he did not share it. And I realized it before, but I decided to go on the date anyways. And I was curious, would he bring it up? Because in his mind, I'm only seeing him on Hinge, Mm. not knowing this information. But because I saw him twice, I knew it. He did not bring it up once the entire time. And I was sitting there like waiting for it. And it just honestly, the day just was set up for failure to begin with because of that. But it felt like he was holding something back from me. If he had just addressed it, it wouldn't have been a big deal and been like, yeah, like this happened X amount of time ago. You know, you have to spin your story too. Like if you sit there and talk about the sob story of your divorce, that's really different than being like, hey, you know, we realized we weren't right for each other in the time after I've taken all these steps to identify like who's the right person yeah. for me and really get myself into a place that I'm ready to meet that person. That's such a different answer. So I would say listen, like listen to how someone's answering, yeah. not just what they're saying, but how they're saying it. I think the kids thing, hiding the kids thing is so weird to me. You can't do that. That will affect your life. That will affect yes. how you interact with each other, <laughs> your schedules. You cannot hide that. It really affects everybody involved here. But the divorce thing, I do find it a little fascinating if people put it on their dating profile. It must mean, yeah, this is like the train of thought I think someone's going through if they put it on their dating profile. I've tried to hide it before and yeah. someone got really it pissed at me. Yeah. It backfired. So I might as well just be really straightforward with it now and put it up front. You can go either way on putting on your dating profile. To me, it doesn't give me much information. It's just like a status thing. It's like ba- basically saying, I have brown hair. Right. I'm divorced, you know. But if you feel the need to put it on 
your dating profile, by all means, Godspeed, you do your thing. <laughs> but back to our original question is when is the right time to bring up mm. your relationship status? I don't think it needs to necessarily go on your dating profile unless kids are involved. I think the kids thing can go on your dating profile. That's very yeah. important information to know. So I went on a date once. We actually had him on the podcast for a recap. Mm -hmm. This was a throwback. Jeff was his name. I don't even remember what season it was. It was a long time ago. Yep. But I was his first date in 12 years, which is what the episode is also titled. And I remember he told me on the date that he was in the middle of a separation and I was his first date. And it did feel kind of icky. Mm. Like I felt like I needed to know that information because it was mm. it went back to this person is clearly not ready to like be in the same place as me. They are just in the thick of it. So I think for that one, he didn't necessarily need to put it on his profile, but it might have been a good thing in the conversations we were having before we yeah. met because we did talk about stuff before and it felt a little misleading. I really think the time to tell someone there's no hard and fast rule, but what is that point where it's going to feel misleading and how do you get around that? I struggle with this because I think about the first date I will go on yeah. when I get back into dating will be my first date in over five years. Do I let this person know up front, hey, you're my first date in over five years. You're my first date after this long ass relationship I just got out of. Like if you were on the receiving end, what would you want to know and when would you want to know it? I really think it's how much have you processed it and where are you in the dating world? Like, I don't know that you need to tell someone that you're their first date in five years. Mm. Maybe you can. But again, it's what's the story you're telling? It goes back to that. Like, is it is my first date in five years? I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if I should be here. Like, that's scary. <laughs> If you're like, yeah. this is my first date in five years, I've taken a few months to really like rebuild my identity and figure out what went wrong and what I want in a new partner, whatever your spiel is, but like something that shows that you've done work. I think that's a very different story. And do you have to share it? I don't know. Like, it's not like a bad thing, but I don't know if you have to like frame it like you're my first date in five years. Like that does feel like yeah, a little... Yeah, it seems like a lot of pressure. Yeah, like I think you should share that. Yeah, you got out of a almost five year relationship. Again, when it feels like it's a natural point, it comes down to so much of just where you are. That's what it is for me, at least. Yeah, it's a good way of putting it. It's not about your status. It's about your yeah. mindset. Your headspace. And you control your narrative. So you choose how you want to tell where you are in this stage of life. If that somehow naturally reveals your previous relationship status, be it. If it doesn't, it doesn't, right? Just make it as natural and organic and authentic as possible. Yeah, we need to do a whole other podcast brunch talk about how much do you share versus hide because I really don't think you need to be hiding anything and mm. to me like the right person you should be showing your authentic self that being said this is why it needs to be a whole other topic is you can go too much too soon yeah I'm just thinking back to the person that told you about like how they knocked their ex up and then they got an abortion like did you need to know that no right so there, no, there is a not. line there is a line so maybe we can table that one for another one but definitely check out that episode we referenced it's all about how you're showing up which actually is going to relate to the episode that we're doing next week so if you're not already subscribed make sure to rate review subscribe get on it we also prioritize any brunch talk questions that come through the reviews so leave us five stars with that and we're going to keep going into this topic because it's a good one but hopefully this helped so great question. We are always pondering this question all the time. We love to hear your opinions. Let us know. You can email us hello at datablepodcast.com. You can leave us a rating and review like Julie just said. Five stars, please. Please. <laughs> it's not that hard, right? Or you can DM us on social media at Datable Podcast. That's our handle on Instagram. We'd love to hear your opinion on how soon, when should you reveal your relationship status? And also what other brunch talk questions you have. We have a whole season to answer your burning dating questions. Uh -huh. Get them in. Yes, we do. Okay, and we'll see you next week.
Bye. The Dateable Podcast is part of the Frolic Media Network. Find more podcasts you'll love at frolic.media slash podcasts. You can follow us on Instagram at Dateable Podcast and visit datablepodcast.com for access to all the episodes in our premium programs. Also, make sure to subscribe today if you haven't already on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform so you are the first to get all the latest episodes. And most importantly, stay dateable. Thank you.